In this video, we're going to use everything we've learned over the last three videos involving JavaScript, macros, as well as local variables to create a really good mute toggle. Now, toggling actions is really hard to handle in remotes because you have to constantly keep track of the status so that you know which command you've actually activated. So basically, is the toggle mute on or is the toggle mute off? This is also especially powerful with uh, device control power because a lot of devices do not have discrete power commands. They don't have a power on command and a power off command. It's just the power toggle command like the one that's built onto the remote. So to get started, I know I'm going to need a variable to house this information of mute status. So let's go ahead and create that first here in the uh, virtual device. We can create as many uh, local variables here as we want. I'm going to name this one variable uh, receiver mute status. And I don't need a default value uh, or any of this other information here either. So again, we've just created an empty box of where to store information. Now back over here on the mute, I do need an actual command to send to the receiver. We can send that via IR. We'll create that real quick as well. Again, connector module one address two for the receiver is what mine is. And I've already got the command handy here for us. Okay, so I do actually need to assign that command to the toggle button. And if I had done that using the state's state variable, I can go ahead and put that here into um, the state variable, which is mute toggle. And we can run it within runtime. And if I send the command, you can see me clicking on it. And I don't know if you can see that down there, but the receiver is actually muting when I click on that, just like a button would work. But if you look closely, you'll see that the slider itself does not actually move. The slider is not receiving any feedback about whether or not the receiver is in the mute state. To resolve that, rather than uh, sending this command to the uh, receiver directly. Instead, what we want to actually do is talk to a variable instead. Uh, now you'll notice here on the toggle, there are no scripting options currently. Under events, clicked, pressed, and released for buttons, the same thing does not appear within a toggle switch. And I think that may actually be a feature that's coming soon within Home Remote, that it just hasn't been rolled out to all the different controls. We can actually get around that right now using a bit of a trick by using the device variable that we created, that empty bucket earlier, it actually has an option within it and the variable receiver mute status that I created just a second ago that does allow us to assign an event to it when its value is changed. So here's a location in this box where we could be writing our JavaScript macro code rather than on the click itself. Okay, so you might be saying, well, how do we get that value to change? We can do that back on the uh, slider itself, or on the toggle switch itself, by using these states. So in this case, I'm gonna use my off state as zero, and I wanna change my on state to one. You could also use on or off, or true or false, but I do recommend using the same syntax of commands throughout your entire project. Now, rather than communicating with the receiver directly, this time all I want to do is activate that variable instead. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm telling the slider when you're pressed, I want you to go access the variable receiver mute status variable, and I want you to change its value to either zero or one. When that value is changed, that's going to allow the script that's loaded here in value change to run, and it's going to use that state, we're gonna use that state as a identifier in order to uh, control the behavior of that button itself, or that uh, toggle switch. So let's go ahead and start writing our macro in here. We're gonna start writing our macro, or JavaScript, this time by first trying to obtain the variable uh, that activated this command. So we're going to start with VAR in all lowercase and we're going to arbitrarily create another variable name here local to this JavaScript uh, macro called mute status. 
and we're going to set that equal to the app dot get variable value command and we want to obtain the variable value uh, from the variable receiver mute status that activated this command. Now to make sure that we've got the information we need, I also want to send uh, some feedback to the application uh, so that we know we're good. So we're going to use the alert functionality and we're going to ask the alert window to display whatever is sitting in the mute status variable. Notice this time I did not use the double quotes around the alert because I don't want to send the text mute status in letters. I want to actually obtain whatever value is being stored in the mute status bucket and the mute status bucket is being obtained or uh, saved the same thing that we've got in the variable remote status bucket. Uh, and that is being controlled by the state of the toggle switch. So if all these things work in the alert window, we should see those zeros and ones being passed in. Let's hit up the runtime and see if that is in fact the case. And it is, you can see here one indicating on, the toggle switch has been activated. And if we turn it back off, the variable state is now zero and the alert is zero. And of course we could be storing these values, uh, putting them in a number of places um, now, it's also important to go back into the script and actually go ahead and re-add that command, the part we were wanting to actually send. We're done with testing right now pretty much, so we're going to get rid of the alert uh, line we've got in there. And instead, we're going to use that get dot or uh, app dot set variable value again. And we're going to send that command that says go ahead and do that mute toggle and pass in nothing to that, just send it as a activated variable. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and test it by starting the runtime and checking that toggle button. You can see down there at the bottom it is muted. The toggle button has gone to the on position and off works the same way as well. That's all for this one.